And over in St. Elizabeth, some passengers in Junction were left stranded this morning after taxi operators who plied the Junction to Mandeville as well as the Junction to Santa Cruz route withdrew their service. The taxi operators staged a protest claiming they're being targeted by the police for not using the designated taxi stand. TVJ News understands that the police have increased operations and have prosecuted motorists, including taxi operators, for several breaches of the Road Traffic Act in recent weeks. But the taxi operators are insisting the designated taxi stand is not suitable. The bathroom, no, no bathroom. When I get Papa for I just slap you when I pass. I will tap in my turn, let off, I take up passenger. The man might give a $2,500 ticket, so we must clear the road park. And we don't have a park. And we have a road license, we can pick up and let off where it's necessary as long as we don't have traffic. And okay, I can't talk to them, they still not give me a ticket to see them. You think it's easy to pay a 2 dollars ticket in a corona? In the fear of power, we are taxi man, we are family, we are bills them to pay. They need to relocate the park, which are the park is now is no park. In a TVJ News follow-up now, the Hanover police have charged the patient care assistant from the Noel Holmes Hospital who is accused of molesting a 15-year-old girl. He has been charged with indecent assault. He will appear in the Hanover Parish Court tomorrow. The police say the man was charged yesterday based on a ruling by the Director of Public Prosecutions. The girl alleged that she was molested by the patient care assistant on May 22. The teenager was taken to the hospital for treatment after attempting to end her life following sexual abuse. In the meantime, the Hanover police say they've prepared an arrest warrant for the person of interest who's being sought for the alleged sexual abuse. They say so far the man has been able to elude them. Children's advocate Diane Gordon Harrison says her office will be holding talks with the police in relation to allegations involving People's National Party General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell. Dr. Campbell has filed a lawsuit against PNP member Karen Cross and others for defamation, having publicly denied the allegations. However, the police have said they are looking into new information arising from statements from unnamed persons filed by Ms. Cross in her defense. Speaking on Radio Jamaica's Beyond the Headlines program yesterday, Mrs. Gordon Harrison said the statements raised certain questions. If it is as well that the girls are in fact identifiable persons and they did in fact make these disclosures at the time when they were minors, there is the issue of the mandatory reporting that really vests in any adult who has received any kind of information that a child is being violated. That question also becomes very live. So if these girls are in fact accurate in what they say happened, and they did in fact confide in persons prior to becoming 18, those persons would have had a legal obligation to make a report to the Children's Registry for the necessary interventions to be made. However, Mrs. Gordon Harrison would not speak on whether she would be interviewing Ms. Cross. Would your office then be initiating that roundtable conversation you're speaking about with the police? Uh, and two, given everything that we've heard, would your office or is your office going to be identif um, interviewing, I beg your pardon, Miss Cross in all of this? Well, to answer your question, the first one first, and, and I wouldn't necessarily respond to the second one um, publicly at this time. But yes, I'm in the, con in, in, in the process of making contact, formal contact that is, with the hierarchy of the constabulary force in terms of just a few thoughts that certainly are at the forefront of my mind that would need to be considered in this particular matter. To some COVID-related news now, 37 new cases of the COVID-19 virus were confirmed on Monday. The country's overall case count is now 48,594. The country's COVID-19 positivity rate now stands at 6.6%. The death toll is now 949. One additional death was recorded. The individual is an 86-year-old woman from Hanover. Meanwhile, three deaths are under investigation. In the meantime, 163 persons are hospitalized with a respiratory illness, 10 are critically ill. There are 21,784 active cases. 
The People's National Party, PNP, has outlined a plan of action aimed at restoring unity in the 83-year-old political organization. The statement says, the executive of the PNP has activated the party's Internal Affairs Commission and its disciplinary committee to take steps to forge harmony and ensure adherence to the party's constitution and code of conduct. The statement is signed by 13 members of the officer corps, including President Mark Golding, General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell, the vice presidents, among others. Reports have surfaced in recent weeks of growing disunity in the People's National Party. This has led some observers to question the viability of the party as an opposition. And for the latest in the financial world, here's Cody and Barrett with the Business Minute. In business news, Sandals Resort International unveiled its first phase of the Sandals Duns River, followed by phase two of transforming the adjacent oceanfront land into Sandals Royal Duns River. The resort broke ground on the 230 million US dollar project last Friday. Sandals recently announced it will transform two properties acquired last year, plus a prime parcel of beachfront land into three distinct resorts in Ocherias. With many Jamaicans not being part of a financial network and a lot of banking arrangements still not digitized, BOJ's Governor Richard Biles says there's a need for a central bank digital currency, CBDC. He says this will serve to bolster government service delivery and boost financial inclusion for a greater number of Jamaicans. The introduction of a CBDC is slated for 2022. And the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation, JANAC, will be hosting a virtual forum on Wednesday, which will explore Jamaica's cannabis industry and the supporting role of accreditation. Persons can tune in to the live discussion at 9 a.m. and stream on the Ministry of Investment, Industry and Commerce's website at www.miic.gov.jm and the JANAC website at www.janac.gov.jm. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. In news overseas, Peru has more than doubled its official death toll from the COVID-19 pandemic following a government review of the figures, leaving the country with the highest coronavirus-related death rate per capita in the world. Peru's Prime Minister announced Monday that the death toll from March 1, 2020 to May, 2020, to May 22, 2021 had been revised up to 180,764. The previous figure was 67,807, which is 2.6 times lower. Peru already had one of the world's worst death rate before the government review. And we head to a break, but Renata Brown is standing by with the sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's now time for Midday Sports. I'm Renato Brown. Now, Brianna Williams became the first Jamaican junior to run sub-11 seconds in the women's 100-meter event after smashing the national age group record on her way to victory at the Duval County Challenge in Florida on Monday night. A day after lowering the national junior record to 11.01 seconds, the double world under-20 sprint champion stopped the clock in 10.98 seconds making her the fifth fastest Jamaican this year behind Elaine Thompson's 10.78. There were two Jamaican winners at the meet as Brittany Anderson ran a sizzling personal best of 12.59 seconds to capture the 100-meter hurdles, erasing her previous best of 12.71 seconds. It was a 1-3 finish for Jamaica as former world champion Daniel Williams was third in 12.65. You can see the full review of the meet in primetime sports tonight. Football now, the Reggae Boys Friendly International against Japan has been cancelled as there are currently only 10 players from the 22-member squad in Japan ahead of Thursday's matchup against the host nation. Those 10 players include two goalkeepers. The cancellation comes after the English-based players were prevented from boarding their connecting flight from Amsterdam to Japan on Monday after presenting negative PCR tests from mouth swabs instead of PCR tests from samples taken from the nostrils as required by Japanese authorities. 
the match against Serbia. More football news. Barley Vakusen player Leon Bailey has finally signed the contract presented by the Jamaica Football Federation that will take the Reggae Boys into the next two CONCACAF Gold Cup, World Cup qualifiers, and also the Nations League. After several weeks of offers and counter offers, before putting pen to paper. And finally this afternoon, Russell Westbrook scored a triple-double to help the Washington Wizards beat the Philadelphia 76ers and keep their playoff hopes alive. Westbrook scored 19 points, 21 rebounds and 14 assists in a 122-114 victory. The 76ers, who lost Joel Embiid to a knee injury in the first quarter, now lead the, the best-of-seven series 3-1. Meanwhile, in the Western Conference, top seeds Utah Jazz beat the Memphis Grizzlies 120-113 to to move into a 3-1 lead in their playoff series. Donovan Mitchell top scored for Jazz with 30, while Rudy Gobert added 17 points. And that's it for Midday Sports. I'm Renardo Brown. It's back over to you, Anthony. Thank you, Renardo. And that's the Midday News. I'm Anthony Log. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.